gon' give it to ya Fuck way for you to get it on your own X gon' deliver to ya What's up nerds? Welcome back to Tea Time with your favorite software engineer. So I actually broke my monitor with the webcam, so that's why I've been gone so long, but I finally got it fixed. So I also got a new desk, that's why it looks different. Um, so today I'm gonna, gonna be going over best time to buy and sell stock too. But first make sure you guys subscribe. I'm trying to hit 10 subscribers a day. I'm at like five so far. I also have a Slack channel in the description where I'm hosting a lead code competition every month. Uh, with cash prize so it's not too late to join we just started this month november 2020 anyways the description reads say you have an array prices for which the ith element is the price of a stock on day i design an algorithm to find the maximum profit we can complete as many transactions as you like we cannot engage in multiple transactions at the same time so you must sell a stock before you buy it again so if we have seven, one, five, three, six, and four, the only thing we're going to want to do is we're not going to want to buy seven. Obviously we're just going to want to buy, buy low and immediately sell. Um, so when it, when it's higher, that is, so we're going to buy one. So five minus one is four, and then we're going to buy three and sell it at six. Um, so four plus three is seven. And then here, um, we're going to want to buy at one and we could sell at two. It would give us one and we could sell at three again. It'll give us uh one and then we could sell at four again. And it'll give us one and we could sell at five, give us one for a total of four. So basically what we're doing is buying at one and selling at five. Um, but you could also just calculate the difference between <coughs> each of the prices because it's <coughs> sorry, I had something in my throat because it's getting higher at each uh, day. So we can just calculate the difference between each of these um, and loop through. So that's a really easy way to approach this problem. So let me go to the whiteboard. Basically what we're going to do is we're gonna have a profit, oops, profit equals zero. And um, so we're just going to loop through we're actually, we're going to start at one because we're going to want to check to see if uh, if this is higher than this, then we're just going to add it to profit. It's basically mimicking us selling it. Um, and then we can just buy it back if it if it's the next day is higher. So I less than prices dot length. I plus plus. And so here we're going to check to see exactly what I just said. If this stock is higher than this stock, then we're just going to add the difference between the two to our profit. So if prices of I is greater than prices of I minus one, then profit plus equals um, prices of I. And I'm sorry if it's hard to see, let me make it thicker. Prices of I, there we go, that's better. Prices of I minus one. Sorry, I like it thin when I'm actually writing for myself. I notice you guys can't see it that well, probably. So if that's the case, so we just loop through and then we close our loops. And at the end, we're just going to return profit. So this is just a really easy problem. Um, well, I mean, it's not, I guess it is an easy problem, but uh, you just got to be able to pick up how to solve it. It can, if you do brute force, it's just so much more complex than you really need to make it. So int profit equals zero or int i equals one, i less than prices dot length. So like I said, now we just want to see if this one is higher than this one, then we're going to add it. And this one, it's actually not. So, but when we check this one, this is higher than the previous one. So we do add the difference. So if prices of I greater than prices of I minus one, then profit 
let's just add it to the profit prices of i minus prices so it's the difference between the two and then we just want to return profit so let's run this so that test case works and it's accepted my memory usage is messed up but um so we're actually not using any memory usage so this is uh uh, constant so O of one for uh, space complexity we're not using any data structures or arrays and the runtime is just O of n we're just looping through the entire array once so this is pretty much the optimal solution and that's all I got for you guys if you guys enjoyed the video and learned something smash that like button and I'll see you in the next video yeah.